Hello, I'm Keith Ford, and welcome to another edition of From the Vault. 1950, Colt introduced a fairly revolutionary revolver called the Colt Cobra. What the big change about the Cobra was that it was using that aluminum frame, where at the time, Smith, Colt, any other revolver companies were using steel. But with this aluminum frame came a lot of weight savings. This gun was about 15 ounces versus a pretty hefty weight of the old Model 10, uh, the Colt New Service, stuff like that. But whenever Colt got this out, that kind of changed the market. And there were several derivatives off of this. There was the Colt Air Crew Serviceman, which was a Air Force contract. Now, the problem with the Air Crew Serviceman gun was that it was an aluminum cylinder where the Cobra was using a steel cylinder. So that was pulled from service. But Smith now was playing catch up with Colt. They were doing a, started to do an aluminum frame on their guns. So it was kind of back and forth. But another derivative off of the Colt Cobra was the Colt Agent. The main difference between the Agent and the Cobra was the size of the frame, right here at your grip frame. Uh, the Agent was cut down short and made super concealable. And the Cobra had an extended frame right here, and that lasted from 1950 to around 1966, 67, whenever Colt actually standardized the frames of the Agent and the Cobra and shortened the length of the frame on the Cobra down to the same as the Agent. Now this Cobra right here is a 1969 model that is using the shorter frame and using a pair of Agent grips. Uh, this makes a super compact package, I mean with six rounds. Smith & Wesson, their J-frame, which was kind of comparable to this, was only offering five rounds. So you had a pretty good amount of firepower in here for this gun versus the weight of it. Uh, now the big change with the Cobra happened in 1971. Colt totally redesigned the gun. Uh, they went from this old style barrel with the unshrouded ejector rod to a uh, shrouded barrel and a Bowman style front sight. And just a vast change from the early look of the old Cobras and stuff. But super, super cool guns. Now, the Colt Cobra was offered in four different calibers. It was 38 Smith & Wesson Special, 38 Colt New Police, 32 New Police, and 22 Long Rifle. This one right here is a 38 Special. Now, as a note, Colt does not recommend firing plus P38 Special rounds through the 55 through 1971 production guns. They're just not built for it. Later on, there was a change there that they did, and then there were some updates that you could shoot plus P's in it, but still, though, I'm not a big fan of plus P's in these early guns, so just stay away from it. Now, there's a little bit of infamous history behind the use of the Colt Cobra as well. Nightclub owner Jack Ruby used one to kill Lee Harvey Oswald while he was being transported to jail. And that actual gun is owned by a gentleman in Florida by the name of Anthony Pudlazy, who also owned, was owner of the Aston Martin DB5, which was used in Goldfinger that just happened to mysteriously disappear from an aircraft hangar in Boca Raton in 1997. Uh, Phil Spector used one to kill Lana Clarkson at his house. Uh, Monica Earl, she used one to kill the guy who cut the hands off of Shea Guevara. So now the Colt Cobras has some pretty nefarious documented uses, but still though, it's a super cool gun. And I'm more than happy to have one of these as actually a carry gun with me on times. And so there you have it. That's pretty much a little summed up history of the Colt Cobra. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, be sure and drop us a line. And be sure to tune in again whenever we bring another gun from the vault.